Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I have uh, had a hiatus from YouTube for about two years and I haven't solo wild camp for about 10 years. So I'm really looking forward to this one. We're currently in the Black Mountains, Brecon Beacon National Park in Wales. And I'm currently sweating because this backpack is 25 kilos and it's very hot. I have kept up with the wild camping, but it's always been, I've gone with a few mates to various places over the years and uh, don't really like filming it. A bit annoying for them and whatever. But so yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. Complete peace and quiet. Let's go. So I haven't really, I planned an area today, but I haven't really planned a route as such. Um, just sort of working out when we get here with the OS Maps app. There's little midges everywhere. That's the problem we're coming out this time of year. And guys, if you do come without a planned route or someone telling you where to go, it's a good idea to uh, come early. Don't, because you're going to be trying new trails and stuff. And they don't, especially in the summer when it's all overgrown, they don't necessarily lead where you think they're going to lead from the OS map and things like that so you do end up going back on yourself a few times but I can't remember that bloody quote now but there's a very good quote about the enjoyment being in the journey and not the destination the Berghaus Cyclops 2 Vulcan with the pockets attached this bag has been doing me proud for probably about 15 years never let me down been on some serious hikes been all over southeast asia various places it's covered in shit walking through these woods but it's just solid it's very simple you attach the side pocket it's got a bag inside bag on the top i attach little side pockets there for phone and bits and bobs and then a water bottle uh, Max Edition 32 ounce Nalgene holder water bottle right there. They both fit on the waist belt, so you don't have to keep taking it off. But if you're in the market for a backpack, this thing is just solid. Just will not let you go. That is the reservoir or the dam of the reservoir up there. And there is the country's smallest booty where you can sleep in there. Some other bloke done a video on that, it's quite good. I'll put all the actual links to where I am. Well, not the links, just the, what they're actually called, because I can't pronounce them, in the description below. But yeah, you can walk all up there, people wild camp up there, but I'm not sure about with hammocks. That is Tabletop Mountain, also a nice walk near Crickenhow. And this is all the Black Mountains National Park seen a few wild camping videos from the valley I'm in down then. None of them come up on this ridgeline for some bizarre reason. You cannot come to Brecon Beacons without coming up on a ridgeline. Not a bad spot for lunch. Even if it is tuna and it was on its side and dripped all over your pack and your pack now stinks of fish. Also a perfect spot for a lunchtime coffee.
set up, well, a nice place to set up, shall we say. Because we've got that view of the mountain, view of the mountain, sun's up there. But I'm way too low to the ground. I don't know if you can hear, I'll like stay quiet for a minute. I'm not sure if they'll pick up on it or not, but there is literally 10 million insects. And I think it's because I'm near, there's like an old riverbed down there. I mean, you're going to get insects this time a year, but annoyingly, you have to take it down, find a new spot. Okay, I found a much better spot, guys. Still got the nice view, which you can't really see on the camera. So far, there's zero bugs. And I've got a nice view. So yeah, this is gonna be me for the night. If I had any signal there, obviously another thing when you're camping in these ones, I did have another good one over there, but I looked directly above and there was a widow maker, a tr tree that's dead and it was sitting in the branches above like that. So if that fell down on me in the night, game over. This spot so far is nice. If I didn't, um, if I had any signal down here, I might check the weather and if there was no rain, I would probably just leave my tarp off tonight and just let it sleep here in the hammock. But just never know. You don't want to be getting soaked with just a little drizzle at 3 a.m. Everything gets soaked. You get soaked freezing. Bad times in Brecon. So next thing, get the tarp set up. Okay. Camp is set up. Got our walking sticks there hanging up. It's the great thing with the pine trees. They have all of these dead branches coming off of them. Which, I'm not going to have a fire tonight because just look how dry all this is. There's nowhere really safe to have one, annoyingly. You could have a little one on top of that tree stump. I've done that before, but a bit windy up here. Not windy, but there's a breeze and it could blow that off. So I think I'll just not have the fire tonight. Better to be safe than sorry. Um, put these pegs up here in case in the night... It does piss down or something and this front needs tying down and you can just release your guy rope and they all have these quick lip lock line locks which are quite handy and they're also reflective in the night the tarp itself is a very cheap one i've gone through a lot of tarps over the years this is from amazon it's massive and it was about 20 quid but I am after a new one because it is annoying the tie off points. It literally has none. I mean, I've got some of these little tarp clips that can go on here and you can, you know, clip it on, add a bit of paracord to it and pull it out. So don't need it tonight because it's just gentle. But like there's none on top there. And then what I use with this is just a ridge line with some of these cam locks. Nice and quick. You just loop it around, do that. Um, the tarp I've been looking at is the one wind tarp. I don't know if anyone's got that. Leave um, your opinions in the comment. If you, leave your opinions in the comment section if you have and let me know if you've got one wind or what tarp you prefer. Because then one wind ones, you can shut the... They have like bits here and you can make a door out of them. They do look good to be fair. Um, and then for all the people that moaned last time when I was setting this up in the woods, because it was just temporary, here are the tree huggers with the different daisy chain on them. And then from there we go to the uh, whoopee sling, carabiner. Um, yeah. Then I've got the trusty Burgeld Vulcan up on there, got my jacket hanging up in case I need it. I have a ground sheet under here, because it doesn't weigh a lot. On the other side of that is reflective. So if you was cold and you was having a fire, I've done it before, you can sling that up 
in that section of the tarp and it reflects the heat back on you and actually works really well. Boots are off, sandals are on because it's summer and it's nice to get the boots off after a good five mile trek with that 25 kilo bag on. So yeah, and then under here we have the Eno double nest. I've done a whole video on the double nest. Down here we've just got everything ready for some cooking. Dinner tonight is going to be steak and broccoli. Got all the bits of olive oil and that in there. Homemade popping corn and some almonds to snack on. I've eaten the fruit already. Um, and then yeah, look, you can just hang all your stuff up on these. I tend to have two ridge lines, one underneath the top. And then obviously I have this one on the hammock. Again, I've done a whole video on this hammock and why I have that because I have the diagonal lay. I don't have my um, under quilt on it tonight because it's so warm. I do have my pillowcase from home that I stuff spare clothes in and it's just a nice touch. Um, and then tonight underneath, I've just got a self-inflating pad, which is the Van Gogh Trek 3 standard. It's got an R value of four kilogram. That'll do the job. As you probably know, when you're trying to get the diagonal lay in a hammock with a self-inflating mat, it can be very annoying because they just slide about. But for a night like tonight, it's fine. Normally though, I would put my under quilt. But what I do have is my big Agnes Torchlight 20F downfill 600 fill. Cost me a bit of money this sleeping bag, but it's the best thing I've ever brought because it's got these baffles on the side, which I've never done up. But if you have them undone, when you're in the sleeping bag, you can pull one leg up. When the sleeping bag's all done up and tied up, you can pull one leg up and lay on your side, which is what I used to hate about mummy sleeping bags. I forget what's going on with this. I have no idea, but mummy sleeping bags, I used to really, especially in a hammock, which can be a little bit uncomfortable at times, the gathered end ones. You wake up in the middle of the night and you can't move because you're in your, even in a tent, you can't move in the mummy sleeping bag. The great thing with this big Agnes is you can. And if you didn't want that option, you just do these baffles up, but it's so warm that thing as well. It's just amazing. I've added that out in winter. It just makes my life a lot nicer. But the way you can stretch your legs out in it, I really like. Um, yeah. I am looking at different hammocks at the minute because as much as I do love the Eno, it's the best sleep I've had in a um, best sleep I've had in a gathered end hammock. By far better than the DDs and all these other things I've had over the years. It still is a bit. You know, it can be a bit of a nightmare, as everybody knows. You generally get a good night's sleep, but I've been seeing all these lay flat ones, which I wanted to design one in about 2010. I wish I would have done that because it's the exact way I just couldn't think it out properly, but. There's one out now called the Haven XL. That looks excellent. There's obviously the Amok Dramore, but these two are really hard to get hold of in England. But if any of you have got either of those two and you rate them, let me know in the comments because I really am thinking about investing in one of them. But you've got to get it over from uh, like a situation like this now, that Amok Dramore looking out down the valley to the mountains would just be amazing. Turning it into chair mode, it would be excellent the only thing that i worry about with that is the sway on it but i've also seen the cheap version on amazon but then i watched some bloke done a review on that and it looks awful falls over um, and then another one i was looking at is the hillsden hammock tent and it's like an all-in-one tent and it's a lay flat one again but you don't have to have a pad in it and that looks really good just them options i do want to try them <clears throat> get away from the gathered end if i can these are great for Thing, but you do always wake up in the middle of the night. There's no denying. Anyway, that is camp. I am um, going to make something to eat. Yeah. Lovely little spot. The peace and quiet up here, because it's on the side of a mountain, is amazing. There is a river down there, right down the bottom, and I can hear it. And I have camped next to rivers a few times, and it is nice. The last time this year in May we went to Dartmoor, we camped by a river. And um, it is nice camping next to rivers, but that white noise, I, I don't know if I do like it. I think it can keep you awake. And also this time of year, there's a lot of midges and stuff. Go near that water, you're going to be covered in them. And there's other people down that kind of area. There was fire pits and that, but just up here on the side of this mountain, obviously in a national park, is just complete and utter silence. 
and that's something I haven't experienced for like 10 years because I've just been coming away with other people, two, three, four other people, which is nice. I do enjoy that, but there's a lot to be said for this on your own as well. Obviously, I haven't brought when you go with your mates, you bring alcohol and that as well, and things get a bit loud. Not too loud, but which is all good fun. It's nice eating with your mates around a fire and stuff, having a few cans of Guinness, but there's a lot to be said for this as well. Just getting that silence in your brain, getting back in touch with nature. It's nice. Steak is being made. Dinner is good guys, but that peace and quiet has been destroyed by an army of flies. They must have just smelt the dead meat. I don't know what it is, but they're just harassing the... Oh, they're just... Oh. Last but not least. I'm going to boil up some hot water. Have a lemon balm tea. sunset the golden hour um, chilling in the hammock it's about half nine now I'm feeling pretty tired so I'll probably go sleep soon this is hammock camping I will then wake up about half eleven be like oh why am I so uncomfortable oh why can't I get flat oh why can't I lay my side then I'll realise I'm in a hammock about half hour later, I'll go back to sleep. It'll be nice and I'll drift off. And then, boom, about two o'clock when it gets really cold. What? What? Why is my back hurt? Oh, what? Oh, mm, this is uncomfortable. Why can't I lay flat? Oh, yeah, I'm in a hammock. Mm. Oh, I hate hammock camping. Oh, this is horrible. Why do I do this to myself? Hammock camping is shit. I should get, either get a tent or just stay at home in my own bed. Then I'll drift off again. Then I'll wake up about four and go, oh yeah, you're in the hammock, don't worry about it, go back to sleep. Then I'll wake up and it'll be light and I'll look out and I'll look back to that view and the sun will be coming up from the other direction and the birds will be singing and the sun will slowly rise and it'll be peace and quiet and beautiful and I'll go, that's why I come hammock camping. Morning, guys. Now is that point in time that I spoke of. But instead of being at two o'clock, it was at three o'clock. And you just wake up. You normally you wake up freezing. So it's very rare. I come out. Excuse me. This time of year when it's hot. And so instead of waking up freezing, you wake up roasting, pissing with sweat. You have to undo all your jacket and your sleeping bag. But I can tell you what, I prefer that to waking up, waking up freezing cold a bit. Like, oh no, this is horrendous. Um, but it's just hammocks for you. If if you weren't in these kind of in a hammock, you would just turn another way and get comfortable and then go back to sleep. But you reach that point in a hammock when it's like, no, I can't get comfortable, and your body gets annoyed, and then you wake up 
you literally have to wake up for a bit. So yeah, I have to get up, go for a wee. There's a couple of other times in the night when you wake up and readjust, but then you can manage to go back to sleep. It used to be this magical hour, right in the middle of the night, where your body's just had enough and it tells you, right, get up, find somewhere more comfortable to sleep, please. But, um... Yeah, it is what it is. I, they, I do know people that just say, say they sleep all night through in a Gavadan hammock, no problem. They are lucky guys. Um, but yeah. You've got to show the reality of it. It is fun. Most of the night you do sleep, you just have to know you ain't getting a full night's sleep. And that's just that. Um, okay, on that positive note... Uh, see you in the morning. Good morning, YouTube. It is now nine o'clock. Um, or I slept till nine. Didn't get back to sleep till half four. I normally wake up about half six, so I guess it kind of evened itself out, adding me on another hour or a couple of hours. I don't know. Um... But it, hammock camping is the weirdest thing because then from that time until nine, I slept on my back and I'm not a back sleeper. That's why I'm normally tossing, tossing and turning, trying to get onto my side. And But it's almost like your brain just goes, all right, just sleep on your back for tonight. And then you go to sleep. It's very peculiar. Cup of coffee on the boil. That's why I like metal cups because then you don't have to boil your whole mess can or whatever billy can. You can just fill your cup up, put a ran a temporary lid on that and you're good to go these things are really good if you have not tried a coffee brewer you pour it into the bag coffee's in there let it brew for a bit and pour it out the spout and for breakfast we have strawberries which look a bit weird because they put that on them um, blueberries greek yogurt some cinnamon and some chia seeds hopefully the yogurt hasn't gone off because if the milk turns out to be sour, Chris, I ain't the kind of pussy to drink it. I think his name is Chris. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy breakfast with a view. Okay, YouTube, that is camp packed away because, I don't know if you can see over there on the camera, but it's starting to look very suspect. That is just pure mist, pure mist all around there. And I don't want that. It was starting to get droplets, so I thought I'm just going to really quickly pack away. Okay, guys, so if you do want to find this spot, responsible wild campers only, please. The, um... <laughs> Car park is just down the end of this trail. This is the very end car park, the closest to the reservoir. And you walk as if you're going towards the reservoir, not up the road, which is down there and the river's down there. If you were going to the reservoir, you'd walk up that way. Instead, you walk up there and you keep going and you'll find loads of lovely spots well out of the way. I don't think anyone goes up there. They all go that way towards the reservoir. And I'm not sure this trip would be complete without a track to that reservoir. So I'm gonna go and get the heavy pack off, get my day pack on, as long as my van ain't been broken into. I'm gonna hike up to the reservoir, maybe flow the drone about with its last battery. Okay. The adventure does not end with the overnight. We've now got the much lighter Osprey Talon 22, I think it's called, great pack for a day hike. Um, and we're gonna go to the reservoir and see this boothy, bothy, see what it's all about. See you there. Well, I'm glad I slept in the woods last night because on the trail up to this reservoir, I've seen five 
groups of people with obvious wild camping kit coming back down that way. So they've either had a rave up there or there's just a very popular spot. Um, so yeah, fine if you're with other people, like the one we went to in Dartmoor this year, there was loads of others, but if you're on your own and you're coming out for a bit of peace and quiet and solitude, you don't want tons of other people. I blame all these bloody YouTubers making videos saying you can wild camp up here. So I'm gonna try and do some pronunciation now. This is the Gwen Four Reservoir, built in, no, height above sea level, sea level 1790 feet. Inaugurated 28th of March, 1928. The weather is pretty bad. Anyway, I'm gonna head on try and find the boothie or the boffy. Someone correct me, you know you want to. Someone will definitely correct me. It's YouTube, they'll go actually, they're called a boothie. And the history behind the boothie, shh. No, I'm only joking, it is, um, I'll take it with a pinch of salt, but someone correct me, tell me about boothies, please, in the comments, thank you. Boothy Bothy, apparently the smallest one in the in Great Britain, possibly. I heard that on another YouTube video. Quite a steep bloody track down to the Boothy for the way I've come. It's the only thing you've got to be a bit more careful when you're doing this shit on your own, because if you fall, there's no one to rescue you, and there's no phone signal. There is our Boothy. As you'll see from the last clip, there's someone in the old bothy and they're being really quiet and weird so I didn't really want to go looking in there but there's too much stuff in there for there not to be someone in there. Clothes, four packets of food, two chairs set up but apparently up in that little top bit is where they sleep so I think there might be someone up there, it could be an old tramp or a hermit or something couldn't it? I don't want to go disturbing him, he could have a shotgun. I'm having lunch here though, because I plan to in the boothy. And from up here I can watch and see if there is actually anyone in there. After monitoring the boothy, I'm not sure there is anyone in there. If there is, they're really weird and quiet and um, sleeping in the top bit or something. But if that's all the shit that people leave in there, that is unbelievable. But there was like Tupperware containers with bits in them, so it, just looked, it looked like there was someone in there. I've seen too many horror movies. Um, and plus, I did slip going down this path, stack right onto my hand, so I ain't going down there again. Yes, it is quite frustrating to not go inside the boffy, but we've been to the boffy. That's all that matters. I've decided to come down the side of the mountain. The dam is over there. I didn't want to walk. But I walked all the way back, they didn't walk all the way back that one. I wanted to come on this path next to the river. Uh, it's a little bit perilous. Where there's a will, there's a way. Worth coming down to see the little waterfall. Right, there we are. There's the 
down in the background. I'm just going to head down this trail now, back to the van, and that's going to be the end of the trip. Um, so, if you've made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, hello, sheep. There, these sheep are giving it the big one. I reckon they're going to try and uh, rape me, possibly. Hopefully not. Um, but yeah, right, so I'm going to go... What am I talking about? Right, we're going back to the van now, so I'm going to end the video here. Um, any new people watching it? I am going to be making more of these now. So feel free to subscribe, like, comment, share, all that stuff. Um, what's the other one they say now? Hit the notification bell. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, see you again soon. Bye for now.